everybody welcome back to my channel good morning vlogsters you guys have been missing me hi this is me i'm here i wanted to update you on the doctor's appointment so first of all i want to tell you there's a new coffee shop in town called scooters i feel like i've been there before may have told you about it may not have this is 100 percent if i can get this this is pretty much all i'll eat or drink all day <laughs> is it healthy for me no <laughs> but i noticed that my ritalin really only works with caffeine as well as it needs to um because in the morning when i take it and if i haven't had coffee i can't put words together like normal and now that i have had caffeine and the medication i can put words together again i feel like a little bit of my old self so 50 years of coming up with tools to manage like basically to be a functioning human being with adhd um, all these tools that I learned as I got cancer and as I got older and menopause and those types of things kicked in and overrid, I guess override is the right word, overrode, <laughs> that's it, overrode my normal coping mechanisms, my tools. Basically, it made all my tools obsolete. Um, but now the medication is so helping. Um, if you watch the live stream where I talked about finally getting diagnosed and I don't want this to become all about ADHD, this is all about cancer, this is about me, this is about my life. So yeah, if it's now, this is the new thing. That's what it's gonna be about. But anyway, I did share a link to the video of the lady who talked about why she is so still upset about her late diagnosis, so. Um, it, it's what I've shared with all my family so they can understand what's really going on inside of me. Um, part of what my ADHD has looked like is masking. Uh, masking, you know, they call it um, body doubling a little bit. Um, you, Everybody around you is happy, so you got to be happy. Um, everybody around you is miserable, you know, like whatever it is. Um, body doubling is also like doing tasks, so... Um, it's a lot easier to fold the laundry when someone else is folding the laundry first. And that's not for me, because one of the things that I've always done is folded laundry. That's one of my coping, calming things is uh, folding laundry. Anyhow, I am driving a friend around on errands and I just felt like me. And I had wound care this morning because the freaking wounds are still there and they're bleeding. And I've taken myself off of my NSAIDs and I've gone just to straight Tylenol for pain, which of course doesn't work. Um, I can't take the town of Cody when I want to run our errands and stuff. So here I am stuck. The same thing with THC. THC and CBD helps with the pain, but obviously I don't feel comfortable driving on that stuff. Obviously, can't really drive on THC. It's against the law, but even the CBD, I don't feel comfortable driving on it because it does relax me so much. I'm afraid I won't be as sharp, so I don't. So then I don't take them when I have to drive. But then I'm in the car for a long time, and then it hurts being in the car. It's so like it's just totally vicious like circle situation anyhow um i wanted to let you guys know what was going on now that i've spoken to all the doctors i went to see the oncologist on tuesday he said i am technically in progression so here's the thing if you're he calls it progression if your tumors have increased by 25 percent or more you're considered progression of the disease however because my tumors have shrunk to such a small size them going up minuscule amounts does equal 25%. So what you do is the formula he does is like, um, you know, length times width. He basically has the area of the tumor and he matches the area of the new size and then divide it by to see if it's 25% of it. And it was like exactly 25%. Like the old number was 15.9 was like the, um, the, the multiplication was 15.9 and now it's 20.1. And that is exactly like 25%. Like with like decimal point, decimal point. So um, I am in progression of the disease. I also have a, looks like a gro the tumor on my femur is growing. So I wanted to, the reason I delayed this video, making this video is because I wanted to hear back from my leg surgeon to make sure he's not concerned. He doesn't want me to do anything different. He doesn't have any different parameters. He actually messaged and said that it doesn't look alarming to him, so nothing to concern about as long as I don't have pain. He said, if you have pain, obviously that's different. He's like, then we'll, you know, go from there. I was like, no, no pain, you know, just, I, I haven't been taking my arthritis medicine, so like everything kind of hurts, but nothing like 
specifically leg pain. And remember, when this femur broke last year, that's when I couldn't even sit up. Do you remember that? So, um, nothing like that. Now, what's really funny is, I talked about this before. I have said to my oncologist, how many tumors do I have? And he goes, we can't map them out, there's too many. So I said, okay. So every time somebody presents like there's a new tumor, I'm like, okay, new. And this time he actually said to me, it was kind of funny, the office, we, the office visit was really, he was really quite funny this time. Um, he said, um, well, you know, he goes, and they mentioned, you know, he's like, and you, you know, we know about the one in your uh, right iliac. And I was like, no, no, we don't. He's like, yeah, stop, you know, stop fooling me. I was like, no, mm -mm, that's a new one to me. Um, and I said, I knew about the left one because when I went, when I was in the hospital, um, one of the things they were going to do was going to blaze the, basically that's like the tissue around the hip, around the pelvis-ish area. They were gonna do an ablation on the one on the left, um, but then the doctor, because of the surgery on the right, he didn't want me to have complications on both sides of my legs. So they didn't do it. And because it wasn't causing me any pain, more than I guess being a bad arthritic lady, um, then they weren't worried about it. So now he's like, there's one on the right, right side. And I was like, no, I don't know about that one. And I said, when I went to the spine surgeon last time, I think I probably told you this already guys. So when I went to the spine surgeon last time, he was like, took up the x-ray. Um, that was the side x-ray of my thoracic spine. And he goes, well, there's all of these here. And I was like, mm, what now? There's what now? <laughs> He's like, well, you have all of these little ones here. I was like, doc, why do people keep people telling me this? Like, I have an internal, like, I, I am a bone scan. And I can tell you exactly where all the tumors are. No, I only know what you've told me. And if you've never told me that there's a whole bunch there, I said, I knew about T7, right transverse. That's it. That's the only one I knew about my T. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, actually. He's like, you have quite a few... Okay, good to know. Thanks. <laughs> so that's the thing that's kind of been like, it's frustrating. You know, can you get around me? I think you can get around me, right? Yeah. Are you trying to pull in? Oh, am I clear your spot? Okay, good. All right. He's pulled in. It's oh, okay. <coughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, I'm just waiting like I'm double parked because there's no place to actually park. I wish I could go park in the shade over there, but there's no shade. Um, they redid this apartment building and they took out all like the shade trees, I guess, to keep the yard clean or whatever. But now I'm like, Pfft. anyhow, um, I do know that there is no going back in stages and I do know that there is no getting better. There is no healing. Um, there is a very, very slight chance that I would ever have NED just because there are so many tumors. But we will try. We're, we're, that's the goal is to get NED, you know? Um, the kidney function, like, blood work-wise is still good. Um, their blood work-wise, everything's still good. Not good, but it's where it was. No changes. You know, no changes are good changes, right? Um, I've lost the 15 pounds plus from the cruise I gained like I gained like seven or eight pounds on the cruise and I've lost 15 pounds more than when I was at the highest on the cruise oh he's got room thank you cool beans thanks bud Ooh, that pizza <laughs> mm. so I'm back down I just want to keep going you know the fact that I have very little appetite because of these medications is actually a bonus it's really good if I was on treatment like like chemotherapy it'd be bad but I'm not right now so my friend's back I'm gonna go now and I'll catch you guys when we get back to the house bye We're okay I'm back yay I'm home I'm gonna pump the air up a little bit because it's a little warm in here now I'm not gonna lie oh I know why I had it on I had it on recirculate and you know what every time she got in and out of the car it was sucking all the cold air out I feel like I hear my dad. What do you do? Work for Lipa? Anyway. He used to be loco. Okay, just so you have an idea of the context. Uh, we never had air conditioning in my house. It was like a fan at the most. But we had uh, a company called Long Island... Long Island... 
lighting company. So it was loco. And it did the gas and the electric. And every time you'd leave a light switch on or leave a door open in the heat, Pop would be like, what do you work for, loco? Anyhow, okay. So I'm home. Mom's car is back, which is good. Um, Mom's friend has had it for an extended period of time. She's using it indefinitely, but Mom... Um, but she's having surgery on a foot and she just can't be driving for a while so uh, we're just gonna make sure that it's back it's safe and we get all the oil changes and all that stuff done so um side note this cute picture of me and Sharon from 2014-15-15 how cute we are um I have a keychain from Lisa that says besties where she got a blonde girl and a um brown head girl and we swapped and then I have that keychain next to Sharon's pictures. And that's where my besties go. Okay. That being said. Hi. <laughs> All right. So back to what the doctors had said. <sighs> Wound care. I mentioned I stopped taking all the NSAIDs because I have these teeny tiny like one, micro, mic, one millimeter by one millimeter. Like they're tiny. But they're bleeding like I have a head wound. And... The doc, uh, the, well, it's not, she, she's a nurse practitioner, but she's like the head nurse practitioner. She's like the head wound care lady. Um, she gave me pressure dressings, um, basically to protect them from rubbing off on my shirt and my pants and just to keep the blood in. And hopefully this will work. The last time I had a similar dressing on, it actually made the boo-boos worse. So she's like, I can see you in two weeks. So I was like, how about we just make it next week? And the two wounds, uh, bandages she gave me, both heart-shaped. It's really cute. And hopefully if I can get Jim to take a picture of it tonight, maybe I'll insert a picture here if I can remember. But um, they can stay up for up to a week. Um, so I, she's like, do you want to just come back in two weeks? And I was like, nope, I'm going to come back next week. And she said... Well, I can give you the dressings at home to change. And I was like, no, because if I take this dressing off in a week and it's not good, I want to be able to come and see you to tell me, like, what to do different. I don't want to just put on another bandage. Like, if this bandage sucks in a week, I don't want to have it suck in two weeks, you know? So she's like, I get it. So I have to put the car back on. So what? And it's only 80 degrees out. It's just that my car is really just being, like, extra hot. I think it's 80. It's currently... Oh, sorry. It's currently 93 degrees. That's why I'm hot. It was 80 when I left this morning at 10 o'clock. So, or quarter to 930. Um, <laughs> check my check. Um, anyway, if you have school I highly recommend the sugar-free turtle blended. But I found out they make it with ice cream. So, that's why it's so delicious. But also why it doesn't help you lose weight. Okay. When we last left, we were talking about how the degree, the the progression of the disease is. I'm in progression. And I said to the doctor, I was like, "How about we give it another four weeks and we'll see if the wounds have healed?" And I don't just want them healed. I don't want them to like not bleeding for 24 hours. I need to see like scar tissue. I want it to be gone. You know, I just. Look, when I had the scar tissue on my legs from the surgery, it ate the new scar tissue. Like, I'm not even talking about, like, I want it to be done, done, you know? And it's, it's very frustrating. I know you guys understand that. It is probably the worst part about this whole stinking disease. I am so right with my God that I am not even as scared of dying than I am of what, like, that's not even the worst part is knowing that you're going to die. The worst part is this freaking wounds. Like, I am done with these freaking wounds. I'm done. So anyhow, it's kind of crazy, but um, it is what it is at this point. It We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep making sure that the boo-boos are going to be better and we'll take it one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. So, um, hi, little hummingbird. You landed. It's cute. The hummingbird's like, you haven't put my feeder out yet. I mean, that's just rude. <laughs> um, what I do, I'm sad about, and I do miss, is 
So we had a lawn company uh, for a long time. We had a friend who used to mow my mom's grass for extra money, but he ended up hurting himself and going out on disability. So he couldn't do that anymore. And then we, she hired a company and the company was gonna charge us twice as much as the friend did, but was also supposed to do the hedges and, the, and he, they never did. They were like, oh no, we just do the, cut the grass. And I'm like, you don't even water a seed or anything. You just cut it. We whack and cut it for $65 every two weeks. No, thank you. So Jim and mom and I, when we were doing the budget, he's like, why don't I just get a lawnmower? He's like, I can cut the grass. I said, first of all, I have a lot of grass. Like I had a friend come to cut it in the interim and she was like, holy cow, it's a lot of yard. Um, but the he, the friend said that she would do it in interim with Jim. So that might, or in tandem, like in tandem. So like, she's like, if Jim does the weed whacking and the hedges, and I was like, you know how bad I want to get out there with the hedge trimmer and just shape the hedges. And I've got beautiful hedges in the front, the beautiful bushes that are in the front, in front of my bedroom window and in front of the front door that I just want to, I want to make them pretty. I'm not trying to be Miss Miyagi with the bonsai trees, but I just want to shape them. I want to give them a nice round, round feel, like a nice, maybe flat top. I'm not 100% sure where I want to go. <laughs> so anyway, we got this. This is what we're going to do from now on. Um, I need washer fluid. I know I need washer fluid. Nobody puts washer fluid in there, so I've got to go in and get washer fluid. So the last I left my doctor, I was like, how about we try in two weeks? I mean, in four weeks, let's try this again. And he said, okay, you know, he goes, look, he looks at me and he goes, look, here's the thing. Don't do it for anybody. Do it for yourself. He's like, you're only doing this for yourself. You're not doing it to please me. You're not doing it to please your family. You're only doing it for yourself. And we always talk about quality versus quantity. I was like, yeah, but doc, if I can get 10 more years, I'll get 10 more years. Like, I don't care. He knows that I suffered with side effects for a long time before I get, this is too much. You know, it was not till the back wounds got really, it was really when the leg wounds got really bad that I was like, no, we can't do this anymore. Because the back wounds were just doing what they were doing. I was just doing that um, anyway. But it wasn't until like, like they got worse and worse and then you're like, oh, I got to stop this. Like I can't, the cap of, cap of medics was working great. It was killing the cancer, but it was also killing my body. <laughs> And I know all chemotherapy will do that in a way because that's what it's for. It attacks rapidly selling growth. Like all chemotherapy attacks rapidly selling, rapidly producing cells. Basically, cancer cells grow rapidly, just like new skin does, just like certain other cells in the body do. And that's why there's so many side effects that come along with it. So he said, maybe we'll even try another immunotherapy. And I'm going to follow up with the with the dermatologist will monitor me as we go to see if I don't have any more um, issues like that. That was weird. I just, that was weird. Um, yeah, I am disappointed, but I'm glad that I have the support of my doctor. Uh, one of the things that uh, tomorrow, no, next week on Wednesday is the KCA uh patient portal basically you um you know it's the patient connect where we all get on and it's like a zoom meeting we can support each other i haven't been able to go in two months because of traveling and um i just miss everybody you know it's kind of like um i make a sure that i'm home i put a big alarm on my calendar and everything like turn it on turn it on but one of the things i've learned from there is like research studies people go into research studies all the time and i'm like you know, I do have uh, unique sort of symptom situations. Like, I, I am a unicorn. I have been affected by the chemotherapy X, Y, and Z and the immunotherapy X, Y, and Z. And I'm, my, my disease progression was un, abnormal. Like, it's not, you know, it was... Uh, so, is there a place for me? Is there a study that I can go into? I don't know. So, one of the things I've been talking to Jim about is um, I don't want to move. I love it here, but... Also, like, if we moved somewhere that had, like, a cancer center, like, to MD Anderson in Texas or um, the Mayo Clinic or, you know what I mean? Like, some place that had uh, more, I don't know, 
I don't want to say knowledge because my doctor is very knowledgeable, but more experience because of the amount of patients. It's something my doctor recommended me when I first met him. He said, you know, we don't have very many kidney cancer patients here. So if you needed to go see a specialist, he's on fire with that. And I knew that. So that's why it's been in my brain. Like, it's okay. It won't, it won't, it won't insult my doctor if I do that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just been another leg in the journey. The fact that I'm feeling good today is directly in, it indirectly, it's directly a result of yesterday. Yesterday or the day, the night before last, I took three o'clock in the morning i couldn't sleep so i woke up and i took a tylenol with codeine because it was within four hours i mean it was after four hours of the last one and i ate like some thc chocolate and i slept and the thing is the thc chocolate didn't kick in until i woke up like 10 o'clock in the morning and i was like so stoned and it was a good stone though um it gave me such clarity of thought which was so weird and i didn't expect it um, and, and stone for me, high for me. And not, you know, it's not high for the same, isn't the same for everybody. Everybody's got their own tolerance level. Everybody's got their own baseline. But for me, I just was like, it, I was feeling good. I was just wanting to do all the things. I was hurting like a mug but before that. And I was just like, you know, because the day before we had a lot. We did, you know, two doctor's appointments. We took mom to a doctor's appointment. We did... Did she leave her phone in here? Did she leave her phone in here? Like, I'm on my phone, so it's not messenger videoing from me. That's so weird. I don't even know. I think it. I think she did. Oh, she did. Yes, her phone is in here. Okay, that was funny. Um, is that her sister? Um, I was like, if she's with her sister and she left her phone, I'll give her phone to her sister. Um, one of the main reasons that I have not been vlogging for the course of the last couple of months is because I don't know how I feel. When I first got diagnosed, I felt like, I got this, no big deal. I really did. And my positive attitude, people are just like booming. You know, like, what can be worse? I, you know, what's, I've got cancer. What, what else do you got for me, you know? But the fact that I have to keep stopping treatment because of the side effects, it's really become an issue. It really has become like a mental mind screwing let's put it that way we're like I know who I, I know who I am I know whose I am I know where I belong um, and I always have until the last few months I don't know anything things that made sense to me before don't make sense to me anymore and it's not about the medication just the medication it's about like everything else the changes that are happening in my life um, I just, I, I don't know. I just don't know how to act, how to feel, how, you know, like what, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of crazy and I just sound like a, a, you know, like I'm just repeating myself over and over. And truth is, I just don't know. So it's a matter of trying to figure out all of this stuff. It's a matter to figure out who I am, whose I am. I know that already. But like, what am I supposed to be doing? Where am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to be feeling about all this? You know, it's funny because one of the things that the ADHD medication has really helped me do is to analyze the world differently. I think one of my coping mechanisms was that I needed to be a people pleaser. And when I realized how many people are out there just mean as balls with their own nasty freaking opinions about me, I don't know what they are or who they are. I just know that they're out there. 
I had to like reevaluate everything. I have to reevaluate everything. Like, what is happening? Like, why are people so fucked up? Excuse my language if you don't like cursing. I just can't think of another way to say it. Why are people so messed up? Why are they so full of hatred? That you would take somebody, whether or not, that, like, you don't believe me, that's fine. But you see, why would I go through all this stuff? Like, I just don't get it. Why are you so freaking mean? And I know hurt people hurt people, but you've got to get to a point where you're like, yeah, maybe I should just stop. I mean, it is what it is. I had to cancel my last two Irish shot appointments. Technically, I didn't mean to cancel the last, the first one. Jim accidentally canceled it on accident. And then when I went, I was almost at this place. And I was like, check the time. And she said, I thought it was 11. And she said, it says 10.30. And I was like, oh crap. So I go in to go call, like I was five minutes away. And it was 10.40 already. And I was like, I went to call and tell her I was on my way. And I thought the time, she's like, I don't have you down today. And I was like, I, you don't? I was like, that's weird. What? And she's like, yeah, it looks like it was canceled because of a new injury. And I was like, oh my God, he canceled the wrong appointment, which I'm fine with. But that makes perfect sense of why the wound care people didn't get my cancellation notice. So. keep swimming <laughs> you know, sometimes I do ask Jim to deal something on my phone if the phone if the print is so small that I can't zoom in or I can't read the text and sometimes the app for the my chart basically is that app that the companies use and that app is uh, super small in the writing so he accidentally just uh, canceled the wrong appointment and he um yeah, um, where we are, where we are right now. So uh, I have to call them as soon as I get off the phone with you guys, and well, at two o'clock when they're done with their lunch, and call them to make a new appointment for eye shots because I they help. And do I look at my eyes right now and say I'm gonna need my eye shots? No, but I don't want it to get bad again. Like I don't want to have the macular edema. I don't want to have the blood bloody eyeballs. I don't want to have that just to say like, hey, it's better. Um, anyhow I'm gonna go this was really nice getting to catch up with you guys hopefully you're able to I don't know if you have any questions if there's something I skipped or forgot <clears throat> <coughs> I would greatly appreciate it uh, if you put it in the comments or email me message me personal instant message <coughs> excuse me direct message me on uh, Instagram or on Facebook it's easier for me to get those messages um, than, than for me to check on YouTube okay I love you if nobody's told you you're loved you can always come by and hear much I love you because the truth is I do even with all the medication changes and all my brain functioning and func unfunctioning I just love you and I love the haters like what's wrong with you but come on I, I only care because I only love you because I care I only say what's wrong with you because I care I want people to be nice to each other. Mary has a Mary Fry has a shirt that says nice people are nice. And that is so true. And I just want everybody to be nice. Like why can't we just be nice to each other? It doesn't make any sense why we have to be hateful and hurtful. I guess everybody has a different opinion of who they should be nice to, but I'm pretty sure that my red letters didn't say anything about picking and choosing who gets the love. But that's just me. <laughs> So as always, you guys, take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye.